Right, all we have here is a sigma notation problem. This letter, capital letter here, stands for the Greek letter sigma. And what it means is we're going to add up each term. We start off by looking at different values of i from 0 to 5, and they go up um, by 1 each time. So this tells us the starting value, and this tells us the finishing value. And what we're going to do is put each of them into this, and then add them all up. So start off, we put 0 into that. So you get 0 plus 1 is our first term. Then we add on to that our second term, put 1 into that, 1 plus 1. Then put 2 into it, 3, 4, and 5. And we end up adding up the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we can just, um, if you know your arith form, sum of an arithmetic, um, you can realise if you add the first and the last term, which is 1 plus 6, and you add up and the number of terms divided by 2, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then you get the sum for those terms. That's going to be 3 times 7, which is 21. Um, if at this stage you don't know this formula, it doesn't matter. We're just talking about sigma notation, and it's just adding up these terms here. Now what we're going to do is take a series and try and rewrite it using its sigma notation. Right here we're going to write out this arithmetic series using sigma notation. So what we can do is we can see that it goes up by 4 each time. So we have an arithmetic series where a, the first term, equals 3, and d, the common difference, equals 4. So the formula that we know for the nth term is equal to a plus n minus 1 lots of d. So we get 3 plus n minus 1 times by 4. And we can simplify that out to get 4n um, plus 3 minus 4, which equals 4n minus 1. So how do we do that into sigma, use that for putting that into sigma notation? Well, let's put this out, and we need to start decide what our first starting point for i, or we could call it i, we could call it r, we could call it whatever we like here. I'm going to just change it to an r just to make it different to the previous question. So I'm going to start off with the r equals the first term is 1. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms, so I'm going to go all the way up to 5. I could, if I wanted, make this 0 and go all the way up to 4. Um, depends how you, you rewrite this question. But seeing as I've got um, 4n minus 1 as the nth term, that is my nth term for the first time going in. So I'm going to call this 4r minus 1. Um, let's just check that I got it right. Put r equals 1 into this, I get 4 minus 1. Next one, put 2 into that, I get 4 times 2 minus 1. And what I can see is I've got 3 plus 7, and I can see it's going to go up by 4 every single time. So what I've done is correct. Now, I've just asked my class what they uh, if they had any questions, and they suggested that I might want to try i starting off at minus 1 and going to 3, i minus 4, was it? Plus 4. Plus 4. Um, this is a common mistake, is to put the plus 4 here because the difference is 4 each time. If we type, write that in, we get minus 1 plus 4 gives me 3. Plus, now if I put 0 in, I get 4. If I put 1 in, I get 5. If I get 2 in, I get 6. Put 3 in, I get 7. And we see this actually only goes up by 1 each time. Uh, the reason being is, if we wanted to go up by a certain value each time, we wanted to mimic a times table. And we've only got the ones, we're only multiplying i by 1 in this case. I want the 4 times table mimicked, because I want to go up by 4, so therefore I need 4 times my variable to get my actual formula that I want in here. But this is not an unusual uh, mistake to make, to confuse an arithmetic um, nth term by just adding on 4. This is what you would get if you were using an inductive definition. So, for example, if you had u1 equals to 3, 
and u n plus one would equal u, sorry, n plus four. So I take three, put it in here, add on four, I get seven. Take that seven, put it in here, add on four, I get 11, and then I get my series this way. So you can see how students often confuse the inductive definition with the formula for the nth term.